Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Day, Master of Propaganda. He looks like Defender of the Father and back here to fight on Angleville again. My apologies, but I thought this fight was, you know, somewhat interesting. Over Commander Vesti, another command of Joseph Double Wing Stalin, fighting here for the 1 and 30th Panzer Aufklär Abteilung. Part of the Panzer Lea Panzer Division versus in the South. We got Great Martial Life Place fighting here for America for the 5th Infantry Division, tasked with holding these series of farmlands until armored elements can move up and forge ahead for America. We've got here Breakthrough, Scavenge, and Luftwaffe Ground Forces versus Airborne, Heavy Cavalry, and Armor Company. We got bulletins for infantry, we got bulletins for tanks and infantry. With a double rough start there for Red Marsh, whereas we got a full screen cool run start there for Double Wing. Pre standard play there from both sides. Nothing that's going to make any eyeballs pop out of their sockets with innovation and deep thought. So infantry focusing on the eastern side there for Joseph, with the Kubelwag moving down the western side of the map there. Whereas Brett Mars is sort of initially heavily focusing on the western side of the map, then trying to grab as much territory there, basically meaning that Joseph will have the east, at least for the time being, all to himself, of course, all the thing to keep in mind here, of course, with Angleville is he can always, you know, take a move from the west and right into the east. In fact, using the buildings here in the terrain to swiftly go for the car points and then occupying the buildings, making it very difficult for Joseph to actually hold and retake them. Ready using the cool button here to basically then have Rass, Brett Marsh, sort of initially, perhaps by more time for the forces in the east. He's more focused around here, but seemingly he's forgetting about here, which is always a bit dangerous on Angleville. Cool button there being engaged, pushed back. Also, a fun little fact, uh, today, I just take companies 2chartcom uh, all five factions in 1 vs. 1 are actually more or less equal in terms of win rates. In fact, they are right across the uh, average, which is a bit sort of interesting to note, considering how for some time it's really been the Allies ahead with the Germans sort of behind. So something's clearly, clearly been happening. We'll, of course, see how long that lasts. In fact, it might even not even last a day, but I thought it was interesting. Shooting in down there for Joseph. Rather than hanging about there, Brett Marsh actually going in the defensive for the time being, perhaps expecting an assault there from uh, Joseph, or perhaps setting up first some rifle here to sort of sneak ahead, spot ahead before then making a move here. For, oh, no mind, he's moving in now. Rifle striking from the west to east, even as Joseph then strikes in for the north. Still, Pine is being engaged by the rifle inside the house. Could move ahead, push further for the fuel, and there we go. Going straight for here, making use of the buildings, popping in and out. Scouting ahead and going for the cough ones. Mine went off here, killing poor Jack, leaving him to die. Folks is opening up on the rifle, going straight for the fuel, punch the umpires nearby. Rifle there, opening up as well, cool one being engaged, more rifle moving ahead. Fuel point there being grabbed, almost last there for Brett Marsh. And there we go. Getting very aggressive there now versus Joseph, rifleman moving in for several points. There's John Pioneers, man to get into the house there before the rifleman. But might not quite make it for much longer. Life being cut down, fuel pump almost secured. Fighting here for the western fuel pump. We got forces attacking here from two points. Well, one point and the other one seems to be going for another point entirely. Brett Marsh with three riflemen, not getting any more. Not going for Lieutenant Island Maps, being a bit aggressive, going there for the cutoff point. Fuel point, victory point. A lot of points, really. Four forces out there for Joseph so far. A lot of infantry. Reactions they're doing what they can against the Fultzkans with a rule. They're not going to win this one. Unless Joseph does something really silly. Which doesn't seem to be the case. So right here, Storm Pioneers continues to sort of keep the Americans at bay. Force them out, but they're not quite succeeding. They're in fact slowly bleeding out. we got the Kuba men in the north pressuring, and we got more Fultzkans moving in as well. Feeding more men into the meat grinder. Rifle there popping out. Ah, just I think. Oh, they're trying to get an anti tank rifle off of the Kubelwagen. Really being bold there, Brett Marsh. Could you wipe, though? Ooh, wiped. A bold attempt there by Brett Marsh for the rifle. We simply put no condition to do that, and lastly, you have to end up wiping a full rifle score there. Not good for Brett Marsh. Needs to quit the place. We've got the ambulance on the way. We've got a major on the way, but he's shot on in for he needs to do something to replace him as quickly as possible. Folks, they're taking losses. Overall, his map control is currently really scattered while he's made some course pushes in there. Ultimately, he wasn't able to do too much damage. That's Joseph, so 
That did not work out, and the loss of the full rifle squad there really only makes it a lot worse there for Brett Marsh. He needs to quickly take control back of the battlefield here before things get really sound. We got airborne, and we got pathfinders out here for Brett Marsh. Closing out on the east here, moving up the ambulance to heal and reinforce his front troops to the front line, also hitting Jack there. Actually popping out the medics there to help heal, not allowing them to reinforce inside the ambulance. I think that's a bit of a strange move there by uh, Brett Marsh. German counterattack needs to get back to the ambulance before the Germans somehow manage to run off with it. There we go. Forces going to do this charging in. We are some from doing what they can. Pathfinders with captain support moving up to the west here. Further shooting there. And we got a mechanized red wind up here. Well, he's going up there for Joseph. We got the cool run heading eastwards. Fighting continues here. Germans slowly being pushed back here by the Pathfinders and Captain Combo. With any mean being sufficiently wounded, the Pathfinders will quickly pick them off. They're using their scope. Rifles, and there we go. Incendial grenade off from the American infantry, forcing the entire force back instead of just moving out a bit to the sides. And there we go. We actually see currently Brett Marsh is being severely contained there by Joseph. Part because he's not focusing his strength so far very well. Airdrop in there, and he's dropping in a 50 cal machine gun. Rare usage there of the airborne doctrine track to provide some support weaponry. No rule. Not a bad idea. As long as it's properly utilized. We'll of course have to see how it works out. Right now, Joseph rules the map. And he's actually going for a Puma. In an interesting decision, most players he would actually gone for a Kubelwagen because, you know, what are the chances of their opponent actually going for some vehicles right now? Slim. But he's actually going for a Puma here. I'm not sure if it's just a mistake or if there's some deeper meaning behind it from Joseph. Large push into the west now, a bit more focused, hopefully. Kubang running into the 50 cover straight away, not too good there. The Mardus shredding away more or less half the health of the Kubelwagen. Definitely not good to start. By the same time, he's still pushing towards these, he's moving in the captain's moving in the rear shots while still making sort of a main push into the west there. 50 cal setting up. Airborne rifle, but uh, they has got no anti tank weapons there. Nothing to really, really hold the Puma there with its crash machine gun and 50 mm gun. Rifle under fire. Over here, the rear is being held here by the Stuart Pioneers. Captain Moon West was now to support there. Going for the victory pot. Fulsters opening up there from behind the cabin. We got Fulsters flanking in as well. Need to up the 50 cal more rifle to sort of deal with things. Puma just keeps blasting away. Two killed so far. Two men dead from the Rifleman. Pathfinders gaining veterans. 1 5 kills. 50 cubs setting up support. And there we go, opening up. Will Rifleman moving in. Panzer Shakes flying. Map control still not really looking good there for Brett Marsh at all. Puma needs to be careful. If the captain's men can hit, that is. And there we go. Got the full scan of these run off. Getting some damage in there on the halfway to victory 2 for the Pathfinders. And we got a Lux down the way here for Joseph. Lux off Kleong's Panzer. To mix it up with the Puma. Not a bad combo in particular. He's got good map control. This rather solidifies it. Allows him to play it a lot more aggressively because he doesn't have to worry about his opponent getting any vehicles or armor much for the time being. So the Puma should be able to sort of handle anything that Bert Marsh could throw at him for some time. And the Lux should overall punish the infantry. We got airborne infantry on the way there for Brett Marsh. Cool button slowly makes its way towards Veteran 2 1. Brett Marsh will probably consider an anti tank gun as soon as possible. Relying just on the bazookas, I think right now is going to be a bit of a bad idea. Pretty shooting up close. We've got the Luke's moving in. Captain moving up. Paratroops moving in. Thompson's up. Machine guns on the way. Puma taking some damage. Got the ambulance. Quick danger. There you go. Captain almost knocks out half the health there of the looks. Forcing Joseph to have to pull that one back. We also know he's doing a bit of work here. Sort of uh, make it harder for Brett Marsh. He's moving towards the east. And sneak up for that matter. Minesweeper standing about. Right, we're going to need some reinforcement. Paratroopers almost ready. We also got a beacon here. Allowing his paratroopers to reinforce at the front line. But that's about it. Steady up, man. 
All quite beyond that. We got another truck out here for Joseph, but nothing happening with it so far. Squad, game ready. At least Brett Marsh has managed to capture the field on one victory point, but that's really all that's going on for Brett Marsh right now. He's still overall struggling. There you go, Patrick got grenade off there. Both ways. Patrick was managed to push back the folks, but it is wiping out quite a few of them, leaving many corpses behind. So I think only two uh, losses, but overall still taking quite a bit of damage. Medics here under fire, and there we go, getting an anti tank in there to support the frontline troops against the crowd vehicles and crowd tanks. However light they might be. Pathfinders they caught by the looks and are quickly getting punished. Boomer there halfway to get to 1-5 kills. Bazookas flies again. Doing a bit of damage there. Looks pushing further forwards. For fuel up in fast land before we got the super rockets flying back at that one. Houston's hiding about there. John Piney is there. Eastern side. Lars have gotten here by both sides. They're primarily by Brett Marsh. Since overall Joseph's last guarded so he doesn't need to defend much. Pushing ahead, the looks there. There we go, taking heavy damage from both anti tank and, and captain. Now, Brett Marsh is meaning a bit more business there versus Joseph. And the Panzer Aufklärung Subteilung. Fun fact usually the reconnaissance troops alongside the, the division's pioneer troops were considered the best men of the division. The elites, if you will. Little fun fact there. Stood on the way there for Brett Marsh, adding some light armor in of his own. A bit bold, of course, considering his opponent does have access to Panzer, of course, all test the Puma. But if you can make it to work, though, it can be still quite potent. Though it is going to be a bit of a challenge there, I think, for Brett Marsh. He probably should either consider another 50 car machine gun to help us with the infantry, or another anti tank gun to help us with the light vehicles. Or he should consider some BARs for the riflemen. But perhaps some bazookas for the V echelons. Those are accusing his firepower one way or the other. Puma flying away. Infantry pushing through in the east. We've got the captain holding them, but not enough. We've got the fifth covering with MVH into one. Making its way towards Retro 2. Looks pushing through there. The paratroopers. Anti tank gun is. Um, was basically taking territory. Not really the wisest move there by Brett Marsh, to be honest, he's left some other unit not quite as important to do so when you're now knowing his opponent's access to Puma and Alux. And he has so far made aggressive use of both of them. And he's more than happy to punish Brett Marsh for any lapse in anti tank weapon. There you go, good hit, good hit. Comes again in Veterans you want. Another truck on the way there for Joseph, so all you taking up there. Grabbing territory there, we got the steward up and moving now. Making more progress in these. We got the Jaegers now running here, so we got Scavenge versus Airborne. As for actual Jaegers on the Western Front, there were pretty much none, I think, except for the SS Jaeger Verbande, was sort of more special operations, and Gebirgs Jaegers, which of where there were two divisions, one Wehrmacht and one Waffen SS, which some might argue wasn't even really a Gebirgs to be shown. I really didn't see any action in the mountains. It was primarily more like a ski division or something. Warning orders, gang. Jaegers moving about there. Beacon still remains. But right now we're seeing basically Brett Marsh contracting all his forces more or less, leaving the west entirely open. Giving Joseph plenty of options, he has sort of sweep through it. While well, he's now sort of poked, sort of pushing hard for these, but at the same time again, very much at the cost of leaving the entire western side open. And now we got Joseph pretty much just striking down there. Of course, he's going to find no resistance, so he can pretty much just grab as much as he wants until Brett Marsh gets the counterattack going. But even then, he's going to of course obviously find some resistance from the Germans. Pedro's Pathfinder's moving in. Stuart hanging back. No weapon racks there. Full Brett Marsh again. BRs really will do a lot there versus all those folks going on using the Jaegers. Lucas continues to creep ahead there. Using cautious movement. Dieter outside pushing the tank to ensure it moves as silently as possible. 
push harder, Dieter. I'm pushing as hard as I can. Get out here yourself, you lazy bastard, if you want to keep attack. pushing. Got a scrap hunter's quarters up here. He could disrupt it if he spots it. He could disrupt it. He could wreck it. But the question is, will he discover it and wreck it? So again, we sort of got two pushes here from Brett Marsh. One sort of larger here now, counter tank in the west, and one smaller in the east, which also spread out to attention. Ooh, booby traps. Of course, have to see how this works out. Looks opening up, head close quarters. Got the captain moving up. Bazooka rockets flying, piercing the armor time and time again. And there we go. Looks goes down in a ball of fire. The thing is brewing. Folks, they're wiped out by the paratroopers. And there you go. Almost got it. Almost got it. From we got the pool moving in now. We got no enough troops nearby to us to destroy the spare punted quarters. And he had a bit more force here. Perhaps could have pulled it off. Oh well. Stuart, at least by the looks of it, gets away with the rifle getting pummeled here by the spare punted quarters. And it's third to him with a flak on the rear. But still, he was able to do some damage for once there to Joseph. Folks, going wiped. In fact, we could see two squads wiped. Plus, it looks destroyed. That is not exactly bad. Then we got artillery strike going down here, right into the midst of Brett Marsh's Western force, hoping to shatter and decimate them. With the fury of about 12 guns. And to tank and pulling back here. But a good strike there overall. Punished just, I think, for extending and perhaps taking Brett Marsh there too lightly. Two folks going to this. Looks quite dead. That's not something I think Joseph's going to bounce back from too easily. Three our punted quarters could do some repairs. But he can soon go himself for a Panzer IV. He could also throw some orbital so and that would not be a bad idea at all. You also got additional Jaegers here for Joseph and the. 130th Panzer Aufklärer Abteilung. Captaining up close. And there goes Stuart sitting in once more. What will Joseph sort of do in response to the loss of his looks though? He's just going to wait for the Panzer Force. He's going to throw in some more vehicles or what will he do? Only why the Puma is retro to one six kills for Deutschland. Our supply line just got cut off. Getting some hits there. Got plenty of missions, but he's not really upgrading any of his infantry. Again, there's uh, no BARs, no bazookas, no nothing. Got a push here against the Jaegers. Paratroopers spearheading, supported by the Pathfinders. Quickly gunning down the Jaegers, they're taking some severe losses in the process. Like moving up again, cutting down by the Kugelwagen. And here the medics are getting shot to bits, unsurprisingly. Almost got the Kubelwagen there, almost. And this time here for the mid-game analysis. In terms of damage, Brett Marsh ahead in terms of kills, though, Joseph is very much ahead there. So it's a bit worrying there for Brett Marsh. Army value-wise, Joseph's actually sort of been in the lead there against some uh, the unfortunate losses really didn't have out there. Brett Marsh, he's sort of getting back now, he's getting back now, but it's not without, again, some uh, headaches, if you will. And again, we can see where he actually managed to do some good damage there to Joseph. Resource float-wise, we can see he's actually not been floating too many again, it's just Joseph sort of been having the advantage there. And points held again overall, Joseph sort of been having an advantage, but now we are seeing that Brett Marsh is beginning to strike back. But initially, he probably was, I think, a bit too unfocused then. Joseph was able to take advantage of it quite strongly. And now sort of Brett Marsh sort of taking advantage of perhaps some mistakes there from Joseph pushing back. But of course the question is, can he actually solidify this hold and do something with it? One thing to keep in mind is Brett Marsh is still overall scattered across here the battlefield. There's no real focus, no real strong points. And to a certain extent that can be powerful, but it can also be a weakness if your opponent sort of can do better than you in that department. And so far, to some extent, that is actually what Joseph is doing. He's just hitting here and there, striking, swiping, causing damage to Brett Marsh. And that's really something Brett Marsh needs to be careful about and do something about. One option is to either bring up more support weapons, set up some machine guns here and there, maybe some fighting positions. That is very much one option. Another is to basically upgrade the infantry as much as possible with BARs and bazookas. Very much another option. Either way, I think he needs to consider doing, going into either of those options. Taking up for some armor is also a pretty good idea, and that is what he's doing. Though he, of course, does need to be careful with it. His opponent has Pumas, and folks go to the Panzer Shakes, and he can probably soon go for a Panzer IV, which is only going to give him any sort of initial armor a bit of a headache. 
So a lot of things there for Brett Marsh to keep in mind. But he needs to be more focused. He has a tendency of you know, just making sort of like several pushes. And well, I'm not saying you should. You should always be more careful when you do that because you're very much risk losing contact somewhere and taking some rather nasty losses. So he does need to be a bit careful there with those moves. For Jezero, we so far performing well, but now the tide's turning a bit there. He might have gotten a bit overconfident, and now he needs to sort of turn things around again. Might certainly obviously a good option there. Orbital Darden, a Panzer IV. Austin right now I think it would be a poor choice. Whereas Panzer IV getting a bit more aggressive. Would also help this Azama down the road, so that's more of a good thing. And again, Orbital Darden, a lot of anti for firepower. But also I think be a strong choice there for Joseph. Beyond that, though, I mean, he's sort of doing all right tactically. He's achieved just an extent. I think that rather works well there. It's really Brett Master sort of needs to change his game there versus Joseph and sort of try and change how the fight is, uh, you know, fought. If not, Brett Marsh might not do so well. So let's return to the fight and see what happens. More beacons down there. Impressive. Also gives them a bit of an intelligent advantage there in terms of the minimap there. Again, it's all free, so that's really a benefit there for Brett Marsh. Boom, that tank to nasty, a tank to tank gun. Remember to use take aim, take aim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there we go, but a bit too late, there, a bit too late. We could, of course, try and use it to knock out the Shvia Panzer's quarters, though. It's already being rapidly repaired here by the Storm Pioneers. Stuart Rush is anti tank and support. He needs to cover the Willis Fox and the Puma. Careful. Also got that 50 cover wrecking down the crowds, leaving many to die in the road. Pulling back the paratroops, I imagine, to the beacon to reinforce. In terms of the community force the front line again, he doesn't have to worry about that. Just a major for so, I mean, the veteran paratroops scored with the so few beacons are actually a surprisingly potent force. They can actually remain on the battlefield for quite some time until they actually sort of directly forced off. There you go. What about actually just needs to actually bloody well reinforce them. Jaeger's launching a grenade assault there. Knocking out quite a bit of the interior there. Patrick's moving up. Eight kills almost for 20 feet. And we got the paratroopers just sweeping the windows for the Thompsons. Shia Panzer goes up in there, power finds a bit of trouble. At the same time, we get a push here. We've got forces flanking in, getting ready to sort of hit from the other side. Stuart then a bit of pretty bad precision. Need to get out of there. Pair need to move down there and deal with the false guys. I think a good grenade, or perhaps tactical assault. They could do a lot of damage. Attempted grenade assaults. Move the paratroopers. No, it's send your grenades, actually. Stuart moving in. we got a bit of fighting in the west. Jaeger's getting gunned down by the captain and the 50 caliber. Fultz managed to push back the paratroopers and the pathfinders. Still try for tactical advance, but no. Tactical assault. Tactical shooty bang bang. Betty 2 on the pool increases accuracy and rate of fire, making a bit more lethal versus infantry, though it's really veterans he fleet that becomes pretty solid versus infantry. Really treating the almost got the Puma. In this case, till he decides not to go after it, probably not a bad idea considering how close this is to the base. What he might have out hiding there. But there you go, we got a panzer on the way there for Joseph. A bit of panzer support for the Aufklärung Abteilung. Also, a fun fact, usually a panzer division for most of the war, when it was split into Kampfgruppen, were usually split into sort of three main Kampfgruppen. One of those Kampfgruppen would usually be the Division's Reconnaissance Battalions mixed together with the Division's Anti-Tank Battalion. Fun fact there. The Volkswagen's Pumas, Jaeg is charging forward it down the main road, Rifleman captaining when the council open up there. The Suka hitting Rifle could try and power together and tank Rifle grenade. Shaman on the way, they have a red march, getting some tanks, and there you go, grenade assault flashing out the captain. As windows and rooms collapse, and there you go, one building went down. Rifleman did not make it on time there, absolutely wiped there. Rather grim stuff there for Brett Marsh, Panther 4 charges forwards. Major needs to get out of there before he suffers a major reversal. And to tank the firing away. Veteran to 2 a lot of shots fired. Did some damage to the Panther 4 infantry contraption on the west side there. Jaegers blitzing ahead on foot. Stood and counter attacking here. And that fifth cover continues just to murder away there, halfway to Veteran to 3. Sherman almost done. Schwerpanzer is also down. 
that's actually going to hurt Joseph a bit there. That means he can't get a replacement Panzer or say any orbs are done, which I think would have been a really good choice. Still, he's maintaining some good pressure on the western flank. Harassing, we got the pair of them moving in to try and counter that, though they should be as aggressive as possible. Try not to hang back too long, though, otherwise the Jaegers with the marksmen can do some good damage. And there go Grenada sort of off. Managed to dodge most of them. And there you go, Sherman out. Going towards the west there. Which is going to high explosive, getting a 50 caliber. Needs to be careful, of course, it doesn't run into anything nasty. You got the uh, folks goes and the Puma moving in. Sherman could actually end up very quickly in a lot of trouble. Nemo Fern finding his Stuart moves in against the Panther 4. Uh, what are you doing there, Brett Marsh? Anti tank and fast gets off a hit. Sherman, nope, oh, there you go. Turret ring jam, need to get out, and need to go. Oh, yeah, I think that's a misclick. No, oh, he's moving it back. Ah, oh, right for the Panther Shakes and the Puma. Oh dear, that was a huge mistake, I think. Huge. And the Sherman goes down. Oh no. I'm not sure what he's thinking there. But again, you can sort of see perhaps he was just trying to manage too much, you know. And overall, he was sending his Sherman in with basically no support. They're rushing in ahead into the danger zone, but he's also trying to manage a conflict here. I think he should have reinforced the main conflict in these for the Sherman and basically for the time being given up on the West. But instead, he tried to sort of greedily hold both. And ultimately, while he had some success in the East, he lost a Sherman very quickly. That's a huge loss right there to Brett Marsh. That's a huge loss, and that's going to make sure that Joseph can actually operate a lot more boldly because he knows he's just wrecked a Sherman. That's not exactly small biscuits. We got Weapon Rack there, finally getting it. Really should have that up sooner. You should have that up much sooner, though I suppose late is better than never, but you know. He's mixing up BARs and bazookas. He's worried about the vehicles, not bad, but you know, don't forget the infantry. Squad, Meanwhile, Joseph's taking advantage of the damage he's caused there to Brett Marsh. He's also managed to capture the stewards, he can't move through there easily. We got infantry there. He's about to support it, but again, now he's pushing for the west. He's not trying to save his steward light tank. He's trying to recapture what he lost in the west, leaving the steward basically to die there. We've got the Puma moving in. Very close to Vexing G3. So again, it seems like Brent Marsh can't quite decide what he wants to do there. He's a bit unfocused. He's a bit scatterbrained, it feels like at times. Now we got the Pentaform moving up. So and there we go. Betch and defeat for the Puma. Now that is very bad news for Brett Marsh. That's a Puma that is an also pretty solid versus infantry. Pentaform breaches the wall relentlessly. Has access to the base there. Further fighting here, pushes through. Might be able to get the coup wagon finally. There we go. Kubel wagon kaput. Major being pushed back there by the Panzer 4, which is getting better than 1. 50 cal anti tank moving about them. In fact, anti tank is almost ready to flee. Got paratroops and captain flanking in behind Joseph's forces. Very much again acting very aggressively here. Need you though. Forgotten again. Finding off a lot more than he could perhaps chew. Paratroops moving in, they might try and cast the folks along the retreat and wipe them out. That would definitely be pretty good there for him. Slip of health, there you go, he goes for tactical assault, he takes no chances and he wipes them. Good show there, good show. Very nasty blow there to Joseph. Love Cook to get into replacement, Captain there about to get grenaded. Oh dear, he's not paying attention. Oh dear, Captain took massive casualty anti tank and flying away there. Gaining Vexion to free, taking the Puma down to almost half health. Of course, it's his base, it can quickly get repaired. Panther 4 setting out there. Catching the Captain on retreat. Anti tank, I know it's his support. And. Wiped. I was trying to react to that with the anti tank, but then of course, you got the Puma striking from the north. Right now, Brett Marsh just relying on a captain in the bazooka for so long. He's beginning to see a few problems there. I mean, he's got some bazookas and other units, but the problem is they're not really focused. They're just sort of here and there, spread out, meaning he can't really concentrate the firepower, which means his overall Joseph has less to worry about because he's clearly not currently frightfully intimidated here by Brett Marsh's anti tank tactics. 
Got a push up here by Fulkman, it is. Two fresh squads. Merrily thrown into the battle. Three more kills, 50 kills opening up, Patriots moving in, 24 kills for America. Victory points really close now. So Brett Mars clearly done something there, but he's struggling. Nega Pool moving in, flanking the anti tank gun. Rafa moving in, they're getting blasted by the anti tank gun, trying to get out the Pitsuka. The Rafa don't have room, and I don't think the Mega can pick it up. Or if they could, there was something went wrong the other way, though, that did not work out well. And there go grenading the anti tank, grenading the big fled, getting off some kills there. Almost got it wiped, almost got it wiped. Panzer 4 moving in there, go anti tank gun crew dead. 50 Kappa setting up, having spent in almost 53. Captain moving up, so he's called up a fresh captain to replace the one lost. Brett Marsh desperate for bazookas, but not more anti tank guns, and that would actually have been cheaper than the uh, captain there. Doing some damage to the Panzer 4, Panzer 4 almost 52. Paratroopers. Pathfinders moving in, eager for the kill. Crewing it with the pair troopers. Of course, you always got a beacon nearby so you can just reinforce them easily, but the Panther was already blitzing away, avoiding it. And there you go, Puma snapping away. Gaining veterans before increased range on the Puma. Nasty work there, nasty work. Jaeger's doing what they can. And there you go, Bazooka dropped again. Vietnam's wipe, both of the bazookas drop. Bad news there for Brett Marsh for America. Got a Jackson on the way there, tank to store that should help out a bit. And Joseph seems to be saving up a lot of resources, could perhaps be playing for the King Tiger now. Feeling pretty confident how the battle is going. We'll use the Pathfinders act to grab the bazookas. Looks like it, looks like it. They would benefit them more, I think, from BARs, but uh, currently I don't think the situation allows them to be picky or choosy. This is pretty desperate. Pants 4 again using the virtual to try and flank, get up a few hits here and there. And the old's got infantry moving up here, hanging about on the western side. The raiders are flanking in behind Brett Marsh, setting up for a nasty assault force, charging in. Pants 4 firing in there. And Patrick moving in straight to the shooting point, Jake is opening up. Patrick out in the open there, got close. Uh, doing a lot of damage, so ultimately they are shredded there by the Storm Pioneers. Jax moves in, pushes back the Panzer 4. Halfway well, to death. And the Rifleman doubling back there. Jaeger's opening up, trying to snap this for downtown McKinnon. And now the folks go find themselves one more activated, pushing up from the left and behind. Brett Marsh there, deep flank now executed by Joseph there. Seems to be working so far. Brett Marsh is com caught completely off guard here. And there we go, just massive grenade assault against the anti tank gun. Just looking for the primary target. There we go, wiped it. Slowly getting suppressed there, but still made a huge gap there in Brett Marsh's defense. Opening up for the Panzer Ball and the Puma. Though he seems to be not taking advantage of it. In fact, he uses medics though to crew the anti tank gun. It's a medical anti tank gun. They could never dream of shooting it. Sarge, I don't think that's how it works. Shut up, Dewey. Pair troops almost reinforced there. Okay, got your feet, ladies. Almost, but not quite. Trying to soon kill to America, to make you moving up here. To now they lightly defended east. So he's doing some damage there to Joseph, but again, Joseph is very much feeling confident he can get away with going for a King Tiger. Panzer moving it straight into the anti tank and the Jackson. Jackson misses, anti tank and does not, and also scores a successful hit on the armor. Raven moving in there, Pair is following up. Moving towards the east. There we go, Storm Pioneer surprising the Major and friends, sending them all running. Panicked. Armor car ready for action. Panzer 4 ready again, Veteran T2, plus of course that Veteran T4 Puma. He's a lot of firepower there for Joseph. And he's very close to the King Tiger, very close. Lord's got Veteran T3 on the 50 caliber, and he's quickly using the sprint here to get out of the bad situation there once things got a bit too close. 
Artillery raining down, fighting over near the beacon. Patch with us hitting the stormtroops running, right coming up there. In fact, leaves the west a bit open. We got artillery running down here, again, right in the midst there of where Bright Marsh's defenses are. Jackson pulling back, got nothing to deal with all the infantry with. He needs a Sherman or a Scott or something. Patrick's there, ah, oh, not fully focused. And there you go, quickly evading a massive grenade assault getting there from Joseph. We are moments away from the King Tiger, the Königs Tiger. Quickly going down the Fulton is leading them to die in a ditch. The there you go, suppressed, veteran to flee though, sent running, 50 cover there still fighting away. And again, so scattered, going for the victory point, just really trying to push them hard, try to bleed Joseph hard. Panzer IV taking some damage over the bazooka, anti-tank rocket grenade off as well. Taking down to less than half health, good work. Jack's moving in, please be careful. Needs to be careful. Will Brett Mark be aware what threat is about to bear down on him? Mega 6 is so tons of crook steel. Good hit on the Puma, the Puma is just circling about, the Jackson is much faster, much more maneuverable. He right, tried the HVAP rounds with him today, and there we go, Veteran to 5 for the Puma, and the King Tiger arrives, Koenig Seagog effects for right. Fifth cover up inside the house, and he collapses, wiped the entire unit, one shot, one kill. Bad news for Brett Marsh. And with that, he's got a few options actually holding the King Tiger now. Which is also well supported by a Puma and a Panzer IV. Western side of the map being lost, he's getting another Jackson, but will it be enough here for Brett Marsh? He's still got resources, he could still, of course, try and upgrade his way through this, get some BARs on the Major. But will he actually do so? And he's actually speeding up the production of Jackson as a captain. Very nice there, very nice. Tank destroyer is ready for orders. So another tank destroyer is quickly mounted onto the battlefield. Point is under ready to attack. pursue and punish the crowds. Armor ready. Our supply line just got cut off. We're losing a capture point. And with that, I think Brett Marsh surrenders, realizing the fight is over. The spirit battle is lost, his spirit is lost, and he basically just surrenders. So there you go. Bit of a brutal fight at times. Brett Marsh, I think, initially was a bit too scattered. He had to focus a bit more on sort of just a certain part of the map. But he just sort of kept overextending to a certain extent. I think underestimating Joseph, what he could do there with the Oba Commando Vest. And he probably wasn't expecting a Puma first. You rarely get a Puma first. It always looks first. And he wasn't quite prepared for that. And the way Joseph handled it. And he didn't, you know, quite say go enough on anti tanks to go for it. And for that matter, I think he should have gone for some BARs much sooner. Had he upgraded his infantry much faster, I think he could have overall threatened Joseph a lot better. But he never really did, nor did he get another anti tank gun when he probably should have to help, you know, contain it. In that sense, you know, he was sort of in between, never quite here, never quite there. His force lacking some kind of strength. Whereas Joseph sort of was much more focused, much more here and there. And basically running the game to a certain extent in terms of pacing and sort of where the fights happen. Gage he made some mistakes, Brett Marsh punished for him quite soundly. Sort of made his way into the game, but he could never quite capitalize on it. And that also that Sherman was definitely a mistake there, but I also think Harland again that Brett Marsh was never quite fully focused on what was ahead of him. So not, I think, one of his best fights there. But I think a very good fight there. But Joseph overall made good use of his vehicles, the Puma in particular. Rarely do you see a Puma that well utilized. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this match. I hope you learned something from it. I hope it gave you different matches. If it did, want to subscribe, tell your friends, share it with everyone. If not, send a new player and find some feedback in the comment section. This is Imperial Links and Cheers, and hope to see you all tomorrow for another exciting episode. Bye.